Good evening and welcome to the special presentations of the City Council of Moreno Valley. Today is May 7th, 2019. The first presentation is a business spotlight. No Limits Dance Academy presented by Dr. Thornton, our Councilwoman. Good evening, everyone. No Limits Dance Academy, located at 12125 Day Street, offers a variety of dance classes taught by experienced dance professionals. No Limits Dance Academy focuses on elite training while fostering the love of dance in each student. Owner Jennifer Loya was inspired to open No Limits Dance Academy three years ago by her daughters. She knew she wanted them to have the best opportunities where they will be challenged to keep growing, keep pushing, and keep learning. The goal at No Limits Dance Academy is to ensure that kids do not remain stagnant and are continuously advancing to the next level. Students from as young as 2 to 18 sign up for not only lessons, but for a family where they feel welcomed and encouraged every step of the way. Imagine a life with no limits, a life where you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. At No Limits Dance Academy, students are taught to keep striving for greatness. Today, we recognize No Limits Dance Academy with this business spotlight video. Please roll the video. No Limits Dance Academy. Be without limits. Representing the business tonight is the owner, Jennifer Loya. Would you please join me at the mic? It is my pleasure to present the business spotlight certificate in this USB to No Limits Dance Academy. Would you like to say a few words? Sure. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm just really happy. Thank you so much for choosing our business as a spotlight. It's a growing business. We really appreciate that. Um, any sort of um, good word or publicity for it is always good for the business. Um, I'd like to take this moment to kind of uh, uh, go forward, uh, reiterate what the video said. Um, that we do have classes for ages two to 18. If you have any children, um, grandkids that you would be interested in signing up, we're located right off of Day Street. Um, we do have a recital coming up July 20th. So this is the perfect time to enroll them and get them going so that they're able to participate in that with us. Thank you so much awesome. again, Dr. Thornton. No, no thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, we'll Thank you, No Limits Dance Academy. Let's give them another round of applause. The second presentation is an additional business spotlight for the Dragon House. And I don't think there's anyone in District 1 that's never heard of the Dragon House or throughout the city. Uh, located at 22456 Alessandro Boulevard, Dragon House is a family business offering traditional Chinese dishes. Today we are honored to celebrate a business that has been a staple in the Moreno Valley community for over 40 years. Dragon House provides some of the most delectable and authentic specialties of Mandarin and Szechuan cuisine, such as sizzling rice soup, fried wontons, dumplings, barbecue spare ribs, mushu dishes, and a kung pao chicken. With this vast, uh, vast experience in the kitchen, 
I'm sorry, owner, Mr. Cow Lee has also added innovative and new style foods, including a full vegetarian menu. Dragon House is open seven days a week and share, um, year round, including a lunch menu every day. Find your favorite dishes and share them with family and friends at Dragon House. Today, we recognize Dragon House with this business spotlight video. Please roll the video. Over 40 years ago, Dragon House opened its doors to the community of Moreno Valley. At Dragon House, we offer an array of authentic Chinese food, ranging from traditional favorites to new modern dishes. Whether it's tableside dining or a quick-to-go order, Dragon House will always leave you wanting more. At Dragon House, good fortune comes to those who love to eat. Dragon House in Moreno Valley. Would you like, okay, anybody uh, else? Yeah, that's it, just me and my wife. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm gonna present you with a um, certificate that you can display on your wall. I know you have a lot of famous people up there, oh, so yes, yes. find a little space for us. Yes, I will. For okay, sure. and for your social media, we have the uh, USB of the uh, video we just uh, seen today, and uh, I wanna tell you that I'm a witness. You have very good food. Thank I've you. been there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. if you would like to say some words. Uh, Please. Good evening, and uh, uh, I'm still trying to put more good Chinese food for everybody. Uh, what else I'm going to say? Uh, thank you for all the councilmen, and thank you for you to choosing Spotlight for Dragon House, and of thank you very much. Thank you so much to the one and only Dragon House. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> the following presentation is a procl proclamation recognizing National Police Week, which will be presented by our mayor, Dr. Gutierrez. All right, uh, well, good evening. Um, I have uh, here our National Police Week uh, proclamation uh, that we're actually recognizing our police officers in, in town. Um, we have our acting uh, police chief, uh, Levelier. And so uh, would you like to come up here or with us? Okay. All right, let's give him a round of applause. Okay. <laughs> and also the Sergeant Roberts. So it is my pleasure to present a special proclamation recognizing National Police Week. You see, in 1962, President John F. Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in which May 15th falls, which would be uh, next week as National Police Week. National Police Week pays a special recognition to the law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty for the safety and protection of others. Currently, tens of thousands of law enforcement officers from around the world participate in events which honor and recognize uh, everything that they do. Our Marina Valley pol p police officers perform difficult and often dangerous tasks in the line of duty every day. They go to extraordinary lengths to protect the people in Marina Valley, but they also enhance our community well-being through public outreach programs that we have, such as Officer Friendly, Coffee with a Cop, and participation at city events, such as the Police Safety Expo, and they do a great, great job of that community outreach. In recognition of the contribution that our police officers make to our general community and the sacrifices that are inherent part of being a police officer, the City of Marina Valley hereby recognizes May 12th to May 18th as the official National Police Week in the City of Marina Valley and issues this proclamation. 
And I'll briefly state part of the proclamation. It says that whereas the Congress and the President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which it falls as Police Week, and whereas the International Association of Chiefs of Police have also declared law enforcement officer safety and wellness a top priority, now therefore be it proclaimed that the City Council, the City of Myrna Valley, on behalf of its citizens and staff, hereby proclaims May 12th through May 18th as National Police Week in Marina Valley. Let's give a round of applause for, uh, for our police officers. <laughs> and Acting Chief, uh, would you like to say a few words? Absolutely. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, all the council members. We uh, humbly accept this, uh, this proclamation for all the hardworking men and women of the Marina Valley Police Department, Riverside County Sheriff's Department who patrol these uh, streets of this great city of Moreno Valley with a population of well over 200,000 people, and they do a great job doing it, and they're here to protect and serve for all of you. And we humbly accept this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Gutierrez, and thank you, Chief Lelevere, for your leadership and all your staff for the protection they give to our city and make us all feel safer. The final presentation is a proclamation recognizing Building and Safety Month. Councilmember Cabrera will speak and present the proclamation. Good evening. And uh, our police truly are, you know, our guardian angels here. And because of that, we get to go eat at places like Dragon House, and we can go take dance classes and send our children to get dance classes as well. So, um, you know, it's truly um, uh, from the bottom of our hearts that that we do say thank you for protecting us. And uh, so, what I'm presenting tonight is um, the Building and Safety Month uh, proclamation, uh, and it's my pleasure to present. Uh, this proclamation recognizing the month of May as Building and Safety Month. Accepting this proclamation tonight is James Verdugo, Building and Safety Supervisor, and the Building and Safety staff. If you could all please come forward, if we could give them a round of applause. Building and Safety Month is an international campaign to help individuals, families, and businesses understand what it takes to create safe and sustainable structures. Each year, we acknowledge the essential service provided by our Building and Safety Department. The campaign reinforces the need for adoption of model building codes, a strong and efficient system of code enforcement, and a well-trained professional workforce to maintain the system. Building and Safety Month is a chance to celebrate the entire building and safety community and to educate others about the importance of the code regulations. Professionals from the building and safety community come together to support Building and Safety Month because they understand the need for safe and sustainable structures where we live, work, and play. Please join me in showing our support for Building and Safety Month and thank you to our staff for bringing Building and Safety Month here to the city of Moreno Valley. And I do have the proclamation here, and uh, that reads, whereas 
the city of Moreno Valley recognizes the fact that our growth and strength depends on the safety and economic value of our homes, buildings, and infrastructure that serve our citizens, both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster. Whereas, Building Safety Month encourages the proper steps everyone can take to ensure that the places where we live, learn, work, worship, and play are safe, and recognizes that countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local and state agencies. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Moreno Valley, on behalf of its citizens and staff, hereby proclaims the month of May 2019 to be Building Safety Month. Accordingly, citizens of the City of Moreno Valley are encouraged to join with their communities to recognize this month and acknowledge the essential services provided to all of us by local and state building departments. And um, would anyone like to share any words? Maybe Rick or anyone? The mic is yours. As the uh, department director, I wanted to delegate the uh, uh, pleasure to uh, our building and uh, safety supervisor, James Perduco, to speak. Thank you, Mayor, Pro Tem, Council Members, uh, for this recognition. It certainly is a, a, a good thing to have our staff recognized and for all the hard work that they certainly do on a day-to-day -day basis, just the number of permits that they issue, our inspectors, the number of inspections that they go out and do day by day. I think of a building like this, you know, and, and I pretty much walk into every building nowadays just looking at different things that maybe most people aren't used to. You know, you look at the exit sign, you look at the doors, you look at the lighting and things that just kind of pop and uh, I see on a regular basis. But those are all the elements that ensure safety in the event of a fire or an emergency or um, just for the livability of buildings and the enjoyment of, of the public and, uh, and, and the people who use those buildings. Um, I want to say that code officials uh, work tirelessly not, to, uh, not only to ensure customer care in our city, but they also are responsible for ensuring the safety and compliance of the codes and standards that we adopt. They inspect building plans and construction processes to guarantee every building is constructed that follows these sets of codes and standards designed to ensure safety for the community. It is the code officials that shape the safety of the world around us and serve as the safety foundation for our buildings. Um, so with that, um, it's just really exciting to have um, our staff and what we do recognize uh, if you go out to the lobby uh, you will see the the banners that we have there's product there's information there on the table at the entrance there that you can go to and um, avail yourself of the resources that we are that we are uh, sworn to to keep and, and maintain and, and, and assist you in in our community thank you very much Congratulations to our, our building department. Let's give them another round of applause. And I just want to thank uh, our police chief, David Lelevere, for uh, all the work you do. And congratulations on the National Police Week. And we'll celebrate you. And thank you for keeping our community safe. That concludes our special presentations. And we'll reconvene in about 10 minutes.
Good evening and welcome to the joint meeting of the City Council of the City of Myrna Valley, Myrna Valley Community Services District, City of Successor Agency for the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Myrna Valley, Myrna Valley Housing Authority, the Myrna Valley Public Financing Authority, and the Board of Library Trustees. The City Council receives a separate stipend for CSD meetings. I now call this regular City Council meeting to order on May 7, 2019 at 6.07 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Frank Wright. Please remain standing for the invocation, which will be given by Minister Steve Ron Reich from Sandals Church, Marina Valley. In honor of our flag, let us show the finest respects by repeating the following, by saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's a great day in Moreno Valley. Let's pray. Great God and Heavenly Father, we are gathered here tonight to carry on the business of our beautiful city. We ask that you watch over these proceedings, guiding our leaders in all their thoughts and actions. May all that is done tonight be honoring to you and helpful to those who depend on our decisions. Please help us to be patient and forgiving, not angry and resentful. Please help us to be affirming and not critical and help us to be cheerful and not bitter. Father, please bless all those who are here with your wisdom and compassion. We ask all this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. I would be remiss not to invite you all to Sandals Church, Sundays at 9.30 and 11. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, sir. Council Member Thornton? Present. Council Member Marquez? Here. Council Member Cabrera? Here. Mayor Pro Tembaca? Here. Mayor Gutierrez? Here. Staff introductions, please. Pat Jaquez Nares, City Clerk. Catherine Vigil, Deputy City Clerk. <coughs> Marshall Ironman, Chief Financial Officer, City Treasurer. Martin Kozanowicz, City Attorney. Tom DeSantis, City Manager. Alan Brock, Assistant City Manager. Mike Lee, Economic Development Director. Rick Sanzemeyer, Community Development Director. David Lillivere, Acting Chief of Police. Abdul Ahmed, Fire Chief. Kathleen Sanchez, Human Resources Director. Erica Green, Parks and Community Services Deputy Director. Michael Wolf, Director of Public Works, City Engineer. All right, thank you so much uh, to the staff. Um, we are going to go into uh, public comments on non-agenda items. Just want to remind everyone to be respectful towards everyone uh, that's uh, speaking, uh, especially to the individuals at the podium. And um, it, each person is limited to three minutes for each speaker, uh, and that you refrain from duplicating comments already made by others, other than to note that you agree with the comment. And uh, public comments on matters on the agenda will be taken up as the item is actually called. Uh, in order to preserve the meeting decorum, uh, we'll hold our comments, uh, council and staff, uh, towards uh, the end uh, regarding public comments. So Madam Clerk, how many speakers do we have on non-agenda items? Three. Okay. Let's go ahead and call those three. Rafael Burgueras, Tom Jarrell Sr., and Roy Bleckard. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, staff, residents, and our guests. Happy birthday, Mayor. It's a pleasure to be here with you, enjoying your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my message is to the parents in the city of Moreno Valley the grandparents, neighbors, and friends. On May 18, we're going to have a youth conference here in this chamber. So for those who's never been in the chamber, especially young people, can see how government really works by being in the building that governs them. They should, be, they should come. You should bring them. On May 18th, between 10 and 2, 10 in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so they can get professional advice from employers to get them ready for the job force. Because it's free to them. They have an opportunity to start young. 
This is the things that we're doing in the city of Moreno Valley with many programs. We're starting them young. So they have an opportunity to find a job when they graduate or get out of college or come out of the military. We want them to be ready in the city of Moreno Valley, whether you stay with us or whether you venture out. We want you to be ready so you can serve your country and your state and your city. So you cannot have an excuse in your future to tell us that we didn't help you. So please come May 18 at 10 o'clock in the morning and enjoy the free, free advice. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Okay, next speaker, Tom Jarrell, followed by Roy Bleckard. Tom Jill, speaking on behalf of myself, and definitely a bit for the Sunday. Uh, happy birthday, Mayor. Oh, nice thank you, thing. Tom. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but then, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pratem, Council members, members of staff and the public, both here in the chambers and watching at home or on the internet. Uh, a couple of something I didn't get time to uh, give a little kudos to. I, I love giving kudos when they're definitely well deserved. Our graffiti patrol, graffiti abatement, outstanding service. I recently called for. Uh, Kind of a small one, but it was on a poster, and usually those are hard to. Uh, man, I don't know who did it, but it looks like brand new. I thought they changed it out, and uh, and then we had a pole that was uh, a barrier pole that was uh, tagged. And so, as I said, and I go to other cities, and you know, I see a lot of graffiti. So it's a great, great thing. I've had the opportunity to meet a couple of the people in the field, and I always thank them. So it's a great public service, a great uh, good use of public funds. So it works very well. Uh, and then uh, a little thing that uh, kind of struck me, but this kind of thing builds community. Uh, a week ago Monday, I was taking my trash can out at 5.30 in the morning, and, uh, you know, I'm on my crutches, so I'm pushing it. Luckily, it's downhill. So I got my little system there, and I see a car, and, you know, you feel somebody's watching you, and uh, so I noticed the car went by slowly, and then the man stopped, turned around, came all the way back, just to see if I needed help, and I don't know who this person was. Maybe he's watching, so... Uh, if you are, thank you. That's very courteous. But, you know, it's little things like that, little courtesies. Like so many people offer to open the door for me, to hold the door open, you know, offer a seat to me. So uh, that's thing I find that very common in Marina Valley. So those are good things. It speaks well for our citizens. Then a final thing, I noticed on the uh, closed agenda, there were property negotiations about uh, acquisition, acquisition of real estate. But they only give the APN number. That's like listing somebody's Social Security number. I mean, it uh, doesn't tell you anything about it. I really would like to see where we identify corner of such and such, maybe the acreage, and maybe the purpose, like right away or, you know, it could what well, we said redevelopment, but things like that could be, uh, you know, myriad of things, uh, expand a park or something like that. But uh, that way the public kind of knows what we're looking at because you're totally in the dark on that. So those are my three thoughts, and I thank you again. Happy birthday, and have a great meeting. Hey, thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Next speaker is Roy Bleckard. Ditto and the happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. And I don't know, uh, can I, a little question about uh, having our youth come down and look at how government is run. That might scare them to death a little bit, but no, it is a good thing for them to uh, you know, get jobs and opportunity on that. Uh, one thing, and it just came out, we had a count on the homeless, and it was up 22% in Riverside County. But one thing on that that I, w that I took note and, and – uh, is Marino Valley was down about 50% on the homeless count. And one of that, and, you know, was why I think the homeless work program was bought, brought in here. Upland has similar, took similar proactive measures, and their homeless count went down. So there are solutions to these problems. And if we work together to do them, you would be amazed at what will happen. Now, in the homeless area, that's a very complicated issue, and you're not going to help everybody. But you can help some of them, and those that are will make your community better because we want to eliminate that and using law enforcement techniques and everything else that's been going on in our city to control the problem, and you see the results. And that's what we should all be working for because it will – benefit of us all because that's one of the things that goes on in the community 
I want to talk about fear. Fear can be a big motivator. It can motivate you. Fear of failure will motivate you to accomplish things. Fear of the unknown or what may happen may make you back up and not do things. So if you use if you use fear as the motivator to do things, you will find that you can accomplish great things. If you back up from fear or you don't face it, that's when we run into problems. So among all this stuff, and you're going to be talking about a lot of important issues in, in, in the budget, but it's kind of like the, uh, you know, everything that goes on. Sometimes you have to put that aside, like that, the fear of the attacks that will come if you do this or that. And I'm sure the mayor's seen all the ones that went on, especially with the homeless to work program that people wanted, but because they didn't particularly maybe like the people that were doing it, they wanted to, to cast stones on it. But you cannot let that deter you. Because when you know you're right, stick to your guns and good things will happen. We have to work on that each and every day. In the future, if we do, again, you will see great things happen. If you back up from that, well, then that's that dot, dot, dot that you don't want to see. Thank you, Roy. Okay, well that moves us on to our consent calendar. We're going to move to joint consent calendar sections A through E on the agenda. All items listed under the consent calendars, sections A, B, C, D, and E, are considered to be routine and non-controversial and may be enacted by one motion. I'm going to go ahead and entertain uh, it, from council uh, any items that they would like discussed. If you like one, just go ahead and press uh, your request. Um, okay, A5. For question, okay. And that one is, okay. So, okay, you want to go ahead and ask? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, probably addressed to the city clerk. Um, I've had some residents ask me about this. Um, when they say that we go dark, um, you want to let the public know what, the, what, you, what we mean by this? Uh, we're, I know we're still here, but the programs, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, we won't be doing. Can you kind of explain that, city clerk, to um, general public? The only thing that we don't are not going to hold are the council meetings that are scheduled on the dates that we're that says we're going dark. But city hall is still open. Your your council <coughs> office is still open. So the dates of the meetings that would be canceled would be July second, July sixteenth. August 6th are the regular meetings that are going to be canceled, and then the two study sessions, one July 9th and one August 13th. Okay. But we we will still have regular business hours. Uh, and <coughs> Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council members, if I might chime in there, thank you, Pat. Okay. Um, as, as, as the clerk mentioned, City Hall is very much open. Uh, because this has been an annual uh, schedule uh, with the city uh, for many, many years, I want to assure the council and the and the public that the business of Moreno Valley moves on. We anticipate this in the schedule every year, and so we schedule items to bring to you, so that you can you can ad address issues before and after the recess. So uh, I want to re reassure anyone who may have any concerns that this in no way hinders the operation of uh, of their responsive city government here in Moreno Valley. Yeah, I, I just want the public to know in District 3 that I'll be available through that, this whole period. So don't think that we're going to take a three-month vacation, but <laughs> we're not. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. I have a lot of events uh, scheduled in the summer, and we're, we're pretty much going to be there. Um, okay. Uh, any public comments, Madam Clerk? <laughs> yes, Rafael Mulqueras. Good evening once again, Mayor, Council Members, staff, and guests. This is the consent calendar to me is personal because it's something that I've learned on hand how to bring messages out to the public. Because there's a lot of people that don't read the agenda but look at TV and listen. So I like to give them information. 
just like you do, council members. And I picked um, 12 and 16, but first I want to thank Marshall for his report. And number 10, how our money gets invested in the city of Moreno Valley. It's important that people know where our money gets put into and what kind of funds and how we make our interests. But at the back of the end of the paperwork, the government needs to give us more money. I know 2% doesn't get a lot, but it's safe. Like Marshall always teaches us, it's safe investments. And I appreciate reading that, because I went through it and I was shocked. Not shocked, but surprised to see where all the money is put so we can make interest and use that for the future. My other one was A12. And I want to thank Council Member Th Thornton for her proposal that the mayor put there on, th on the agenda about the vets, jobs. And I like the summary, because I know you believe it, and I believe it. Hire a more, a more, a hire a more mobile veteran program. That's the, the program. The aim of the program is to improve the lives of our city residents. And I'm glad you did that because we have vets here that are looking for work. And once this program gets off, just like the homeless program and the hire program, I know that the city will be better off. Just like Roy said, we have less homeless people, and some of them are vets that are living in boxes or in corners, and they need to be cleaned up. No man or no woman that serve our country should live in dirt. And that's what we don't want, for those men and women to live in dirt. And my second one is Kathleen Sanchez. I love it. I love when we're hiring people. Man, I know the city's doing well. I'm grateful for the four people that she hired and the two people that got promoted. That's a wonderful thing to read. It's small. It's a little thing that's, that's inside of a big agenda. It's hidden. But I see it. Because I want to tell people about how well we're doing in the city of Moreno Valley. And that's why I come here, to tell people the message. Thank I you. know they don't read it, but they see it. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you. Okay. okay, Madam Clerk. No more speakers. Okay, I entertain a motion by council to approve the consent motion calendar. Motion to approve us. Okay, motion by Mayor Pertenbacher. Was there a second by Councilor Marquez? Okay. Please vote. <coughs> okay, and it's approved. It carries um, five to oh, so great. All right, so we'll move on to our four public hearings. We'll start with F1 proposal for a zone change from RA2 to RA5 and we'll have a report from the Community Development Department. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeff Bradshaw, Associate Planner. Okay. Good evening, Jeff. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. Wait for the slides to catch up here. Uh, the item presented to you this evening uh, is a request from the property owner. Uh, two applications were submitted as part of this proposal, one uh, being a request to change the zone for a 10-acre site and the other, an application for a tentative track map to subdivide that same 10 acres. Uh, the project site uh, is, is currently vacant. It's uh, 10 acres located on the south side of Cottonwood Avenue, uh, east, east of LaSalle, and, and just uh, 100 feet or so uh, west of, of Darwin. Uh, the project, um, as you can see, has, uh, has been maintained through weed abatement um, and, and uh, remains one of the few areas in this neighborhood that has not been developed. The current land use designations for that property uh, are residential five or R5 under our general plan, which is consistent with the general plan land use designations that you see to the north and the south, and that's the, s the uh, inset exhibit there you see on the left. On the right-hand side is an exhibit showing the zoning for that area. The property in question, while having a 
uh, our five general plan land use designation has a different zone. The zoning currently is RA2, or Residential Agriculture 2, which uh, would um, suggest uh, lots of about 20,000, a minimum of 20,000 square feet or about a half acre in size. Uh, the applicant um, is requesting to change the, the zoning for this site to R5, which would be consistent with the general plan that already exists for the site as well as compatible with, uh, with the established uh, development that has occurred over time with the tract homes that are developed to the north uh, and to the south and uh, to further to the west and the east as well. Uh, this would allow then uh, for uh, the developer to um, subdivide the site at this R5 standard. Uh, this is uh, an exhibit uh, depicting the proposal. Uh, staff's had a chance to review uh, this map, tentative track map 37643. It is consistent with uh, the R5 standards. Uh, this proposal would result in the 10 acres being subdivided into 31 lots. It would include three lettered lots for water quality treatment infrastructure. Uh, lot sizes here, even though the minimum is 7,200 square feet, the smallest lot is, is around 8,400 square feet, so the lots are, are larger than the minimum, and they range from uh, approximately 8,400 square feet up to 13,000 square feet. This uh, allows the developer to not only be able to subdivide to a, a higher density, but also to provide somewhat larger lots that are consistent with the built homes that are in that neighborhood. The um, environmental documentation prepared for this project was made available to the public uh, in February for a 20-day comment period. Uh, staff did not receive any input, comments, questions from the public in response to that. Uh, additionally, uh, our noticing efforts for tonight's meeting were, were met per the city requirements. Uh, notice was published in the newspaper with mailing notices going out to neighboring property owners within 300 feet and, uh, and the site being posted. The, as of this evening, had received one phone call from a, a neighbor that received a copy of the notice who just wanted to better understand what the purpose of tonight's meeting was. She didn't have any questions or concerns about the subdivision. Uh, that concludes my report, and, and with that, um, staff would support the Planning Commission's recommendation to certify the mitigated negative declaration for the project uh, and, and um, also approve the zone change and the tentative track map as presented to you this evening. That concludes my report, and I'd be prepared to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, okay so we'll just move um, item by item here. Any council questions of staff, uh, please press your button. Okay, we have uh, questions from Councilmember Marquez. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Jeff, um, how do we notify the, the, the surrounding area, the residents in that area? How do, how do we, um, does the city do it or the developer do it? No, the standard practice is for the city to distribute notices of the hearing with information about the project to property owners within 300 feet of the, of the project site. They, they were mailed? Yes. And was it a postcard or, or what? What did it look like? It's an eight, eight and a half by 11 notice. It's actually attached to the staff report. So uh, I believe the first attachment to the report is a copy of the public notice that was distributed uh, to those uh, property owners. Okay. Um, I spoke to a couple of um, residents in that area and they never even heard about it. Um, I drove by there yesterday and there's no notice um, on the property at all. I don't know what happened to it. I know we coordinated with the same company. I was not out there today myself to be able to see what the uh, actual condition of, of that was, but I know we coordinated with the company that provides that service to do the posting. Has a developer reached out to the community there? The I, I'm, I'm not aware that there was any community outreach initiated by, by the developer. Uh, he is here this evening. Um, I, I know that our, our current practice through the noticing is to send the notices to the owners of record. Often, I think the maybe what gets missed in, in that noticing effort is if the home is, is rented or if it's occupied by someone that's not the owner of record, uh, then you might see a somewhat of a disconnect if the notice is going to the owner of record but not necessarily the, the, the party that occupies the property. Yeah, the, a renter usually will get it and look at it and look at the name. It doesn't have their name, so they just discard it. But uh, um, okay, that, that's all I had. I, I have some questions for a developer. But, uh, 
if I might just elaborate one more thing, as mm -hmm. far as the notification goes, it wasn't touched on, but we also publish the notification in the press enterprise, which is a standard practice. Okay. Yeah, not too many people take the uh, take the newspaper <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you want to see it online, you got to pay for it. So uh, that's fine. Okay. Th thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Open the hearing. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with applicant testimony. Is the applicant here? Or you're going to? Uh, he is here in the audience. Uh, I think his preference was to not speak oh, okay. unless you have questions for him, and I'm sure he'd be available okay. for that. Any council questions towards the applicant? Yeah, I do. Okay. So uh, we have a so applicant. Is he here? Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay. So we'll just start with the question part. So go ahead, Councilor Marquez. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Um, a little concerned about this project. Um, I've lived in that neighborhood for 40 some years, and, and it, it, is, it would be nice to have something built there. Um, two years ago, I believe, uh, were you the previous owner two years ago? I was. You were? And, and this was brought forward two years ago? Y yes. It was, it was, I originally was going to have it um, zoned under the, um, under the R2 zoning. And the, the planning commission reviewed it, and we talked about the size of the lots and how hard it is to maintain those lots for a family. Um, they're, the lots are just too big, and and um, you know with the water restrictions, and just the day-to-day -day maintenance to maintain a half-acre lot is very difficult. So you so at this time you decided to to make them smaller. Um, um, well, I, I was I was actually happy with the R two zoning, uh, but. Um, but the, the planning commission, um, some of the planning commission members have um, half acre lots and they realize how difficult it is to maintain. The lots we put for, I, I think the, um, what we put forward is an amazing development. We, um, we didn't have to, go, we didn't go to the maximum density that we could have. Um, the average lot is 10,500 square feet, almost a quarter acre. It's plenty of room to have, you know, a driveway with two cars, a big patio, a backyard, potentially a pool. We also have 23 of the 31 lots around cul-de-sacs, um, which, you know, makes it nice for families. Well, when you did the outreach there, uh, in the past, since I've been on council, we've had developers actually walking the street, talking to the residents. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't do that, did you? I have done that. Oh, you, you did in this project? You, yep. you walked? Yep. Okay. But you, you didn't uh, contact any of the council members? I did not. Discuss it? Okay. Yeah, because I, I didn't know who you were or who owned the property until this came up. And uh, I was kind of concerned that um, you guys, you know, didn't do that. The neighbors on the, um, that owned those big lots, there were about two of them that um, had said they prefer to have anything there. I mean, something there than nothing there. So... Uh, but they were kind of upset that it was going to be a condensed, uh, you know, more homes in that area, and they were concerned about traffic. But, you know, wherever you go in Moreno Valley, it, it's going to happen. It's regardless. But uh, but that's the only questions I had. But anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Applicant. Um, we'll move to public testimony. Madam Clerk. Roy Blackert and Tom Durrell, Sr. Okay. Okay, is Roy Bleckard here? Okay, we'll do two. Okay. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. We'll do three minutes each. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, very familiar with the area. Fully support the project and the zone change. You probably know what's coming next. Because this area could have been fixed with a overlay that was proposed in 2013. It has cost the Yum Yum Donuts probably six, seven hundred thousand dollars to get their project approved. And five years of jobs that were lost. There's a senior apartment complex development of another 10 acres that's been stalled over this. You're burning JPA amendments that shouldn't be done 
because you have approved the money to do a general plan amendment and even among that time in 2017 and you haven't fixed these issues. Business friendly and doing it at business speed means the council gets these things done. I'm sure the developer, and I, if, it, if it's always been the case, this is costing him a lot more money to go through a JPA amendment to get this project done. Ask yourself the question of why there's a lot of residential development in percentage-wise going on around all of us and not here. I brought these concepts up for many, many years and will continue to do so until it looks like we're turning the corner. Don't be fearful of taking proactive action on the council. That's what you're elected to do. You're there to represent us. These guys can work the nuts and the bolts of things but they rely on you to give them the direction to do it. And only you have the authority in the city of Moreno Valley to give that direction. Each and every day, the things like this do not get done or are delayed. It's another day we take a little bit step back. Every day we get on it and we get after it and we get it done is the days we start moving forward and we can start moving forward at a record pace if we get these things done gotta love the trump economy you see how things are rocking and rolling when you put common sense principles in place the the solutions are easy do you have the will to do it okay, thank you and next speaker is tom gerald Tom Gerald, speaking on behalf of myself, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council members, members of the staff and the public, both in the chambers and watching at home. I support the project. I think it's kind of a logical infill. I feel bad that we have these islands of some of the larger lots, but uh, as you heard comments of your own planning commissioners that have half-acre lots, uh, you know, I'm on a 7,800-square-foot uh, lot. My water bill in the summer is, uh, like a front and back lawns, is like, 170 180 bucks and i'm not wasting it trust me i uh, <laughs> it's very very expensive so and you know large lot doesn't translate to uh quality i mean uh, we've got some large lot neighborhoods that are really distressed really distressed because people can't maintain them and they start to collect cars and you know a whole myriad of other problems can come and um so uh you know i think it's a nicely planned uh infill project and uh, and the other two issues uh, the exceptionally high cost of development extremely high the fees and everything you know cost of development very very high uh, thing I like too it guarantees we get a sewer in there and uh, sewer is very important a lot of these older areas we developed on a septic tank I think you know over the next 30 40 years future council is going to be dealing with issues you know with uh, you know septics and so on and so forth uh, I'm not against them. I mean, I built homes with septic, but, you know, sewer is a great thing to have. And then finally, well, I said, except for the hot cost of maintenance. So I will, though, comment on uh, Councilman uh, Marquez on the notices. I, I really think that it should go to 1,500 feet. And I say this is a pro-growth, pro-development guy, but uh, developer pays for that. Okay, they get the list. they got to mail them out because 300 feet, if you're, like, on Alessandro, just the right of ways, 150, 160 feet. So you just hit a few houses or something. And they may be renters, maybe commercial property. So you're not really getting a word out. So and, and, and particularly on zone changes and general plan amendments and stuff like that. So um, I'd have no problem with a 1,500 foot notice. It's not that expensive for the developer, and uh, at least gets the the public involved. Because I do believe in uh, public notice. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right, um, applicant. Did you want to issue a rebuttal? No. no. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to close the hearing. Okay, and we'll go ahead and move to deliberation. Um, any council members wishing for deliberation, go ahead and please uh, press a request. Okay, seeing none. 
I'll entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendations numbers one and three. So moved. Okay, make a motion by Councilmember Marquez. Second. Okay, second by Mayor Pro Tembaca. Okay, and the motion carries. Uh, we'll uh, move to the second part, which is I entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendations numbers two through four. Okay, motion uh, moved by Councilmember Marquez. A second by Councilmember Cabrera. Okay, please vote. Okay, and this motion carries as well. We'll go. Okay. All right. That's for um, the, for all of them now. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Okay, so congratulations to the applicant. Okay. We'll move on to F2, which is the public hearing to adopt the annual action plan for fiscal 2019-2020. CDBG, second time or third time, actually, I think we're hearing this. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, have a brief report from uh, Marshall, Financial and Management Services. Thank you very much, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members. Uh, yes, you are correct. Uh, this item for CDBG through HUD's requirements, uh, we do extensive public outreach, perform multiple public meetings. Uh, the item tonight is the second public hearing in front of the City Council. Uh, from our last public hearing on April 16th, the information in front of you does not change. Uh, so I will be very brief as I kind of go through a, a quick recap on this, uh, but we'll be available for questions at the end. Uh, so as with the Emergency Solutions Grant, the Home Investment Grant, uh, and the Community Development Block Grant, uh, we are required to go through this annual action plan, um, essentially on an annual basis, uh, perform the public outreach, look at what we're going to fund for the next year. Uh, at this point, what you have in front of you uh, for these three grants are with the Community Development Block Grant. Uh, it's approximately $2 million a year that the city receives. Uh, the adjustments that we're looking at really from prior year uh, is we're looking at moving some of the ERC funding to the general fund. Uh, we've approved an additional $30,000 for U.S. vets for their transitional housing assistance. Uh, some adjustments to Salvation Army and the big thing is we've added a new program under the Hope Vision Center, their Summer Academy. Uh, for ten thousand uh, dollars and additionally we've provided in excess of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars for street improvements out of the community development block grant uh, when we move into the home investment partnership uh, this is really used for affordable housing in these areas uh, we receive about seven hundred and forty thousand on an annual basis um, some of that is restricted for nonprofit developers uh, some for other affordable housing developers uh, a portion of this money really goes to Habitat for Humanity for their Brush with Kindness programs and their critical home repair programs, uh, kind of beautifying the community, if you will. Uh, and we're looking at some other home projects, particularly with Mary Erickson, uh, that we're in discussions with and we'll bring forward uh, anything to council in the future uh, if there's any items to move forward. Uh, when we look at the last grant that the city receives, the Emergency Solutions Grant, this really focuses on the homeless individuals and um, what we're dealing with out in the community. Uh, we receive about $175,000 on an annual basis. Uh, the big thing that we're looking at is uh, the, the city has not ignored homeless situation. Um, as echoed by what we've seen from the Riverside County report, uh, our homeless population has dropped about 50%, uh, but we want to maintain a continued effort out there to co continue to do outreach, if you will. Uh, so we've added the social work action group this year to really enhance what we're doing in interacting with the homeless individuals and making sure that they're getting connected with the resources they need. Uh, with that, that gives you a very brief overview of the programs. The full detail is within the report, uh, but if you have any questions, I'm available at this time. Thank you. And again, this is the same one from the last one as well. So um, any council questions of staff on this one? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to open the hearing. Any testimony, Madam Clerk? Yes, Jennifer. Richard? Okay. okay. And we'll do uh, two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. I'm here representing Voices for Children, and we are Riverside County's Court Appointed Special Advocate, or CASA program. And on behalf of Voices for Children, I respectfully ask that you follow the recommendations to fully fund our CDBG request this year. This year's requested amount is um, will provide 15 Moreno Valley children with the life-altering advocacy of their very own CASA volunteer. And you may have noted this year that we did increase our uh, 
a request just a little bit. Uh, as our program grows, we hope that you will support our continued growth and grow with us. So we're grateful for the support we've received over the years, and we thank you for your consideration. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to close the hearing. Any council deliberation? Okay, I'll entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendations numbers two and three. So moved. Okay, motion by council member um, Cabrera. Second. Second by Mayor Pertambaca. Okay, please vote. Okay, and the motion carries, F2. All right, F3, which is um, adoption of the fiscal year 2019-20-2020 slash 2021 budget. We'll have the report of the Financial and Management Services Department. Marshal. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members. Uh, continuing with the theme this evening, uh, this item was presented to the City Council on April 9th through the study session. Uh, the items within this budget remain essentially the same as we presented at that time. Uh, so I'll quickly go through this, and again, at the end, I'll be available for questions uh, or any additional details needed. Uh, when we look at the proposed budget, I always want to re reconfirm the six months of outreach that we've done through telephone town halls, join the conversation campaign, all those items. Uh, we've received input, input from thousands of the residents within the community. Uh, some of that we've also done is conducted surveys and you know, have identified some of the needs in the community from public safety to streets uh, to youth programs. We uh, focus this through the Marino or the Momentum Oval to meet some of those needs. Uh, and then we continue to look at needs in the future as we can meet them. Uh, again, with our budget process, it's really focused on the Momentum Oval, but uh, we like to always focus on our award-winning budget and financial management procedures, our conservative practice, uh, something that's kept us one of the most fiscally strong cities and kept us balanced for the last six years. Uh, the budget in front of you does continue that trend and keeps us balanced for the next two fiscal years. Uh, in the Momentum Oval, there are six strategic priorities. The first one is economic development. Uh, this is part of the foundation uh, to the future growth of the city. As such, we'll continue to invest into attracting businesses, jobs, and reinvesting into our community. Uh, the other item is public safety, as police and fire represent the majority of the city's budget. Uh, we're always focused here on maintaining these services and seeing where we can enhance them and reinvest as needed. Uh, when we look at the police department as a whole, some of the things I just want to point out, uh, when you look at that uh, police officer staffing ratio, the 0.79, the last time we were here for the budget in 17-18, it was at 0.74. So we are continuing to increase our public safety out in the community. Uh, with that, we always want to make sure that we're cognizant of what we're seeing in the future, the trends um, from the past. The uh, rates for patrol deputies have increased at a rate above 6%. Uh, so we're aware of some of those trends. Um, and looking at what the County Board of Supervisors are proposing, but we're very optimistic with the new sheriff and some of his uh, ideas or thoughts moving forward with the budget, so we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, with fire, uh, this is our second largest public safety uh, expenditure. It's about 20% of the general fund. Uh, we just want to highlight we're continuing to invest in those and uh, improve one of the fire trucks as we order the new one that was approved by council previously. Uh, the third strategy is the library. Uh, last budget, we moved forward with the expansion of the library at the mall. That has been a great success for the city and the community, uh, and we're looking forward to continuing those operations, enhancing them a little bit, and looking for a new satellite library within the southeast end of the city. Uh, our fourth strategic priority is infrastructure. We've talked a lot about streets. The CDBG program that you just adopted adds another 850000 plus towards street improvements. Uh, I won't talk too much on facilities as or infrastructure as the CIP will be coming forward to council uh, at a next council meeting. Uh, you'll be able to discuss some of those components with the Public Works Department, but we're continuing to invest in the infrastructure of the city and maintaining what we have in place. Uh, beautification, community engagement, quality of life. This is part of everything that we focus on through many aspects of the budget. Uh, some of these programs, as tonight, the Hiram Oval program, we've expanded that into the Hira Vet program. Uh, that just continues the trend of reinvesting in our community and making sure that we're putting the best things forward for a quality of life in Moreno Valley. Uh, the last strategic priority is the youth. Uh, we've continued to invest millions year over year into the youth and the programs out in the community. Uh, one of the things that I did want to highlight here is we've provided funding in the budget for the MoVal Learns program. 
Uh, so as that is developed, we'll have the funding in the next two years of the budget, and we look forward to the impact that has on the community and the college students. Uh, with that, we get into the, the numbers, essentially with the general fund, or general fund, community services, all of our major fund components across the city's budget. Uh, we've essentially tried to maintain um, conservative flat numbers based on the revenues that we have and reinvesting those back in the community. You will see a little adjustment between 1819 and 1920. That's because not all of the CIP components are in there. Uh, and those CIP projects really fall in with other funds where they're restricted through grants or um, Measure A gas tax, those sort of components as well. Uh, with the general fund itself, uh, the biggest thing that I wanted to highlight here uh, is as we move forward, uh, we've been focused on cost controls for the community, reinvesting dollars. Uh, our operational cost of the general fund is increasing less than 1% as we move into the next budget. So uh, we're being as uh, fiscally conservative as we can in, within the community. From an overall on the general fund, uh, you will see in 1819 we had a reinvestment of $1.1 million for streets out of fund balance. Uh, as we move forward, we continue to maintain that balanced budget, uh, and we basically have a trend of coming back on a quarterly basis to review these. So as revenues, expenditures change as we move forward, uh, we're responsive to bring those back to the council so that we can review it and continue to reinvest in the community as needed. Now when you look outside of the general fund, uh, the next biggest component is the community services district, uh, which entails our parks component, but also has the uh, special districts which does with deals with a lot of the landscaping in the community uh, and along with our library services fund uh, you'll see in these areas when we're dealing with the landscaping and parks we're continuing to reinvest some of the fund balances they have reserves for specific purposes uh, replanting material uh, improving irrigation so you will see some investments as we move forward in the next two years but operationally they maintain a balanced budget uh, when we look at the Moreno Valley Utility, uh, this has been a great component when we talk about economic development. Uh, they provide that foundation to uh, reinvest in our businesses, give them basically better service that are focused on our customer care standards. Um, we get them open before other utility providers can. Uh, and here we're continuing to see positive growth within the utility, uh, balanced budget, and we have the recent bond issue that was out there so that we can build more infrastructure and bring more business into the community. Uh, with that, again, I will always focus on economic development. We continue to be balanced. We've pulled out of the recession as we look towards the future. Uh, we need to continue to be aware of our community, reinvest, continue to grow, and bring jobs. Uh, economic development is not just the one department, but everything that this city does when we interact with the public and businesses. Uh, and with that, just the one thing that I always want to remember is the budget is a living document. We continue to revisit it throughout the fiscal years. Uh, but we also need to monitor the impacts that we have through the state, through the county, uh, as they work on balancing their budgets and work on other um, key legislation. We want to make sure that we're addressing those impacts as soon as we're aware of them and modifying our budget so that we're re um, reactive to this. Uh, with that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open the hearing. <clears throat> Well, actually, any council questions of staff? No? Okay. Okay, public testimony, Madam Clerk. Roy Blickard. Is that just one? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll do two, two minutes. Okay. Surprise. You're dealing with a lot of consequences that you've had police budget to or 2015 and the whole budget you had a proposal that would have dropped 30 million dollars in expenses per year by not doing that you're faced with a lot of challenges crossing guards there was a reform to that that one million dollars they're talking about you're invested in and plus a lot more could have been done had we reformed that Maybe if the city would quit treating Valverde as a redheaded stepchild in this, you might see a little bit of improvement. Sometimes you might have to take the heat, but the true test of one's character is to do the right thing, even though it might not be in your own perceived self-interest. 
a lot of times they see decisions and a lot of the angst in the public is they see that that doesn't happen. Sometimes it takes guts. Sometimes it takes courage. But you can be given 20 gazillion wrong decisions or wrong ways to go. But in each and every decision you make, the right choice is sitting in front of you. You got the guts to do it. Thank you, Roy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the hearing. Okay, council deliberation. Seeing none. Oh, okay. Councilmember uh, Cabrera, you had something to say? Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, just real briefly, um, just want to point out again the the allocations that we're making for a new library in the southern part of the city, uh, which is uh, something I'm really grateful for. Uh, so thank you for helping us uh, put that into the budget. And also uh, the Moval earns the money that we're allocating for that to continue uh, helping our youth acquire their uh, their college education, and I uh, want to thank the mayor for, for working together on that as well. And I also want to commend uh, my colleague, uh, Councilmember Thornton, for the hire of vet idea. I think that was a really, really good idea, uh, so we can uh, make the most out of our, our uh, finances here. So um, thank you again. All right, I'll entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendations numbers one and two. Okay, a motion by Councilmember Marquez, a second by Councilmember Cabrera. Please vote. Okay, and it carries. That was one and two. I entertain a motion by uh, the CSD to approve staff's recommendation number one. So moved. Okay, moved by Mayor Potembaca, second by Councilmember Mar Marquez. Go ahead and please vote. You just have to take these one by one here. I'm sorry, can you it repeat? was Mayor Pro Tem Baca and Councilor Marquez. Thank you. Okay, and the motion carries for the CSD. I entertain a motion by the Housing Authority to approve staff's recommendation number one. Okay, motion by Councilor Marquez. Second. Second by Councilmember Dr. Thornton. Please vote. Okay, motion carries. I entertain a motion by the successor agency for to approve staff's recommendation number one. Okay, motion by Councilor Marquez. Okay, second by Councilor Cabrera. Okay, and the motion carries for, uh, to approve. Oh, we need to pause. So the motion carries to approve the budget, a balanced budget. So let's give a round of applause for that. It's a great thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. And a lot of great stuff in that budget, too, as well. So we're going to move straight to F4, our last public hearing item. Uh, public hearing for the NPDS uh, will have public works. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council. Everybody's leaving, but we're going to have a very exciting... NPDS ballot <laughs> proceedings right here. They're going to miss out. Hi. So this is uh, a NPDS ballot proceeding. It's a condition of approval for a single family residential lot. Uh, as a condition of approval, the property owner has requested to do a ballot proceedings to satisfy that condition. Uh, it is for the NPDS parcel charge, and it is uh, affects only one property, yeah. uh, one single family home property. And the staff's recommending tonight that the council hold the public hearing and absent compelling testimony, close the public hearing and recommend uh, approval of the ballot process. Also accept the ballot results. And if a yes vote occurs, go ahead, uh, ask the council to set the rate. And that concludes that exciting report. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Michael. I appreciate it. Okay. Any council questions of staff? Uh, please press your request. Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to open the hearing. Any public testimony, Madam Clerk? None. Okay, close the hearing. Um, council deliberation. Okay, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendation number two, which is to direct the city clerk to open and count the return NPDS ballot. So, motion by Mayor Pertambaca, second by Councilmember Marquez. Okay, please vote to direct the city clerk on this. 
and then we'll just take like a few minutes or maybe a, a few seconds it's just one um yes vote one ballot okay and so that passes so i'll entertain a motion by council to approve staff's recommendations numbers three and four so moved a okay, move by mayor Botembaca. okay second by um council mayor marquez okay please vote All right, and that motion carries as well. So we're gonna go straight to our reports, which is I-1. That oh, sounds a little odd. Um, city Council reports. So we'll have WR Cog, Mayor Pro Tem Baca, and then we'll have RCA for Council Member Marquez. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. At our May 6th meeting, there was a presentation that was provided by the Inland Empire Economic Partnership regarding the Inland Empire growth, the study focused on ways to increase good jobs in the region. The key findings included the need for the region to invest in industries like technology information and professional services and the importance of education to improve workers' mobility towards good jobs. And uh, if you have a chance, go on WR Cog's website and look at the findings and the um, data that was collected for this region, especially for um, a city like Moreno Valley in the direction that we're moving with the medical corridor and uh, the logistics industry and how we need to build uh, more uh, workforce and work with our school districts so that we can um, have higher education levels raised in this area. Secondly, for the benefit of developers and applicants, the transportation uniform mitigation fees will now be collected through WRCOG. WRCOG staff and city staff have been working together closely to ensure a smooth transition. City staff is letting developers know about the change in fee collection, which will result in a more efficient system of fee collection. That's it. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Marquez for RCA. Thank you, Mayor. It's very short, two sentences. Um, <clears throat> at the RCA director's meeting on May 6th, um, Moreno Valley um, MSH CP um, fees collected was $37,318, and that includes 16 residential permits and a half an acre of commercial industrial use for uh, March of 2019. That's concludes my report. Thank you. I uh, will have a city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the council. I just want to congratulate the council uh, on adopting our next two-year budget uh, tonight. Um, it's important because this marks, these budgets mark Moreno Valley's eighth cons eight consecutive years of balanced budgets. Uh, that is no small feat. Um, and in doing so, it also meets key priorities for each of the council members as well as our community. And very importantly, it keeps us moving to complete the Momentum Oval strategic plan that I know is very near and dear to, to the mayor and the council. Um, adopting a, a complex spending plan like this uh, nearly two months before the start of the fiscal year doesn't just happen. Uh, a lot of communities really struggle with this. Uh, our community doesn't uh, because it's a product of the council's commitment to very strong financial management coupled with what I, would, what I would characterize as thoughtful stewardship of public resources by employees throughout Team Moval at every level of the organization. Um, successful financial management continues to serve Moreno Valley very, very well, positioning us to provide high quality services and to build a strong foundation for Moreno Valley's bright future. That concludes my report and happy birthday, Mayor. Thank you, Tom. All right, uh, I-3, city attorney's report. Nothing tonight, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, we will move straight to closing comments. Uh, we'll start with council member Dr. Thornton. Thank you, Mayor, happy birthday. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I wanna say I'm so incredibly um, just proud that we were able to um, implement the Hire Moval Veteran Program, which is um, just piggybacking off of the success of the Hire Moval grad. Um, I want to thank my colleagues on the dais and the staff for putting in the work that they did in implementing this program. Um, and, and, and the intent of the program is really about that um, Riverside County has the third largest veteran population. Population and veterans, um, you know, of course, I'm biased. 
because I'm a vet. But, you know, I, I, be, I know for a fact we have vast training experience and um, that we are an added value to employers. And so with this program, if you're a business um, that has a valid business license operating in the city of Marino Valley and you hire a veteran who's a resident of Marino Valley, um, you can then receive up to 1000 for each Marino Valley veteran that you hire and retain because retention is a huge issue. Um, there's lots of organizations that have higher uh, veteran programs, but we want to know if you're retaining them. Um, and the great thing also about this program is it extends to reservists and guardsmen. Oftentimes, reservists and guardsmen are not considered veterans um, if they have not deployed. Um, and uh, with this program, we've extended, we, uh, just being a good neighbor, to having the largest reserve base in the nation right in our backyard. Um, and so um, as long as you have can show a DD-214, so if you've honorably served in reserves and guards, it's also um, extends for them. So I'm looking forward to marketing this program and getting applicants and showing that not only do we have veteran-friendly businesses in a veteran-friendly city, but that our vets are thriving and being employed right here at home. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, second, um, unfortunately, last night at Lakeshore Plaza, which is a, a shopping center that is located within Sunnymead Ranch area, it's it's on the corner of Sunnymead Ranch Parkway and Old Lake Drive. Um, I frequented it uh, fr when I was a Canyon Springs graduate. Um, anyone that lives up in that Sunnymead Ranch, Hidden Springs area, knows what shopping center I'm talking about. There were two deaths, two brothers that were killed at the Jack in a Box um, last year. They had a shooting yesterday, and um, I would like to um, uh, suggest that um, we move forward with, uh, they used to have a satellite uh, police station in that shopping center before, and so I'm looking for support, um, the public uh, sub safety subcommittee on um, reopening up the police station, a satellite police station in that area uh, to show that community, which is really isolated um, um, up in that area, that um, the city is, is not only concerned with the safety up there, but um, with the inc increase in gang and just vagrant activity that's going up there. So um, that's something that I'm looking for support on. And also, I have a meet and greet coming up on May 19th from 2 to 3.30 at the Equestrian Park. Um, my meetings are called Meetings in the Park. And uh, I have a goal of going to all the parks within District 2, something outdoors. Um, they had the Houndstown Park reopening last month. And that has been a success. <laughs> I plan on taking my puppy to that. So the Equestrian Park is right next to it. Um, uh, uh, the, the city sent an email out today. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, my neighbors and community members there for that event. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Dr. Thornton. Uh, we have now uh, Council Member Marquez. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to say, Carla, you got my support on that substation. Uh, I, I know it. We're overdue for one out there, and that would be nice. We used to have one in the Fiesta um, shopping center years ago, but then with the downturn and everything else, I was eliminated, but um, we do need one out there, and I support that. Uh, um, Marshall, thank you and your staff for getting this budget for what we could pass it. Um, it's it's nice to, to know that we're, we're secure for the next two years, and you never know what could happen. Somebody could win the lotto an employee and donated the rest to the city. That'd be really nice, but um, we could dream on, right? Um, the Daisy Walk was last week, um, and, the, and the people didn't know who it, uh, doesn't know what that was. It was a, uh, a suicide awareness march um, for veterans um, on a daily basis throughout the United States. Looking at 20 veterans that commit suicide daily throughout the United States. And this walk was for a, a, a awareness. Uh, myself and uh, Councilman uh, Thornton were, were there, and um, we had twice as many this year, second year, twice as many people out there to walk. Um, I want to thank the, the veterans and the volunteers that came out. It was a great event, and I'm looking forward to next year, too, to make it even bigger next year. Um, I just got back from uh, New Jersey. I, was, I attended a civil rights summit, and during the summit, uh, 
one of the um, um, senators from Washington was there, and she spoke about we still do have a problem surrogation and 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 um, back east, uh, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Arkansas, New Jersey, New York. They kept talking about California. We're so far in advance in civil rights movements. Um, it made me feel good, and not only in California, but here in Moreno Valley, we, um, you know, everybody's a brother and sister here, and we all get along, and, and that's great, because what I've seen up there at that summit, it, it's, it's a shame what goes on back east. Um, uh, I, I was just, I was proud to even come, get up and say, hey, I'm from California, and, and we are, uh, you know, we care for our, our brothers and sisters out here, and, and again, in Moreno Valley, so, you know, I want to say um, thanks to our, all the residents here that, that live and work and behave out here. Thank you. Um, next one is the uh, mailboxes. Um, we, we're in agreement, I hope we're in agreement now, aren't we? <laughs> With the, the postmaster from um, San Diego and to get our mailboxes replaced when they're damaged. Um, a lot of the post office, I mean, mailboxes in Marina Valley, there's a lot of old ones, 30, 40 years old. Um, boxes out there and we'll all, we'll get to a mall but right now we're replacing the damaged ones the the older ones that cannot be repaired so i just want to let the residents know marino valley that we we do care that you get your mail at home and we're working with the postmaster and um, get those mailboxes uh, replaced as soon as possible and with that i wish everybody a good evening thank you uh councillor marquez uh, we have Councilor Cabrera. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, just to uh, piggyback on what Council Member Thornton brought up about the shopping center up in District 2, um, we do have mobile cameras that uh, I think we have a few uh, that we, we can move around the city. So if, if that's any help, maybe uh, you can work with staff so we can get one of those mobile cameras in that shopping center for a short amount of time and uh, see if, if um, that helps a little bit so that's just a, a suggestion um, the homeless point in time count uh, is one of the things that uh, we recently got the results for and um, like one of the speakers mentioned Moreno Valley's count went down dramatically and I, I do believe a big part of that was the homeless to work program that we put in place uh, we have helped a lot of people get into permanent jobs here locally and I'm also happy that in the uh, round of CDBG allocations, we, we are funding another program, um, the acronym is SWAG, and so we're, we're trying to target um, um, more of a drug rehabilitation approach, uh, trying to go after, uh, or trying to reach out to folks who have addictions with, with different kinds of drugs. So now we're targeting a different population to hopefully help them, and we can further decrease our homeless population here in Moreno Valley. Um, and I, I, I jumped ahead, but happy birthday again, Mayor. Oh, thank you. Um, Appreciate it. Um, the uh, Legislative Day of Action was uh, at the end of last month. I was able to go up there with uh, Councilmember Thornton and Councilmember Marquez. And um, you know, it, it's always exciting to be there at that time because there's so many different groups from all over California. Um, and you go into the Capitol and everyone's running around, running from hearing room to uh, other hearing room and trying to meet with legislators. Um, but I saw a lot of action, a lot of bills being introduced to address our shortage of uh, residential units. So a lot of bills that are, that are going through right now to try to uh, catch up with where the demand is, to try to build more residential here in the state of California. Uh, because as you can see, it leads to things like uh, income inequality, homelessness, um, uh, different things like that. So um, uh, that was one thing that's being addressed. Also education, a lot of education bills that will specifically target our local universities, our college system, uh, community college here in Moreno Valley, which is also really exciting because we're getting more support to educate our youth here um, for the future, for all the jobs that are coming. We also had an opportunity to meet with uh, Senator Richard Roth, Assemblymember Medina, and a few other legislators uh, to just have um, uh, more personal conversation and talk about what are the priorities here for, for our area. Uh, so those went really well. And um, 
also want to talk about Moreno Valley College. They're currently working on their comprehensive master plan. Uh, so they're looking at for the, the next several years, what do they want to build? What kind of facilities are they trying to build on, on the property there? Um, they had a few workshops, uh, which includes, uh, their plan includes a new library, um, um, a, a theater, uh, parking structures, soccer field. It's, it's really, really nice. And if you get an opportunity, it's probably on their website. You can take a look at that and I'm hoping that we can, once they finalize that in the summer, we can incorporate that into our general plan update. So it's all comprehensive. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, also, uh, Rafael, thank you for mentioning it. The youth conference uh, coming up on May 18th, uh, that's through the Emerging Leaders Council. And I think we still have some space. Um, it, it keeps growing every year, but uh, anyone out there watching, if you have any children or maybe family members uh, in the high school level, uh, please, uh, I highly recommend that you sign up for this. Uh, you get an opportunity to hear from different kinds of speakers. Uh, you get a lot of uh, advice for employment and interviews and things like that. Um, and you also uh, get some prizes. There will be raffles and food and breakfast and things like that. So um, anyone, please, uh, the, if you're listening, register. Um, send your kids out. Uh, it, it's just a few hours, and it will be well worth the time. Um, almost done promise. Um, we also had a, a hike to Olive Hill uh, just a couple weeks ago at the end of last month. It was really nice. Uh, the sun didn't really come out, but, but still, it was, a, it was a good hike. We saw a donkey at the very end, uh, which um, was, was pretty nice to, to see them up close. And we have another community hike, um, uh, independent community hike, coming up on May 25th up to Terry Peak. If you've never been up to Terry Peak, I highly recommend it. If you can come with us on May 25th, uh, once you get to the top, you can see Lake Paris. Uh, if there's hot air balloons, which there usually are down toward Temecula, you can see those in the distance. It's just a beautiful view. And, and it, it, if you get opportunity, please sign up. Uh, you can find the event on Facebook. Um, it's a Hike to Terry Peak on May 25th. Um, last couple points. Uh, the skate park, the grand opening, is coming up. I think it's next week or the week after that. Uh, right down the street here, we're going to have refreshments. Um, uh, anyone who has kids, again, if they're skaters especially, you know, please spread the word with them and their friends that we have the grand opening of the skate park coming up here uh, in the next week. And uh, last but not least, Mother's Day is coming up this Sunday. Uh, so uh, uh, happy early Mother's Day to everyone out there. And uh, sons, daughters, remember to send flowers to your mom. Give her a call. Tell her you love her. And with that, everyone, have a good night. All right, uh, Mayor Pro Tembaca. Thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to add that the skate park grand opening will be Wednesday, May 29th at 5 p.m. So uh, please be there, bring your kids. This is something that was initiated by the youth in the community. They collected signatures, brought the petition to the city council, and we listened. So congratulations. But we'll be there. I want to congratulate uh, my colleague, Dr. Thornton, Councilwoman Thornton, for her leadership. I really appreciate your added uh, knowledge to the council on vet issues. Your knowledge is, you know, impeccable, and your dedication, not only because you're a veteran, but because we are a veteran community. You're an added blessing to this council. I just want to say that because it's, it's very important to me because, you know, my, you know, I come from a, a military family, and um, it's important that we reciprocate what, you know, we can never pay what they've done for us as a nation, as um, combat veterans, with whatever they, they um, contributed to our freedoms, we can never repay them for that. But being able to show them that they're appreciated and that we have programs for them and that we'll go over and beyond our, what we can do to help them be successful in the city of Moreno Valley and hire a vet is just, you know, just a part of what we do here in, in the beautiful city of Moreno Valley. So we'll be having an event at the end of the month uh, for Memorial Day, so stay tuned for that. I also want to say that um, as the vice chair of the Mark Joint Powers Authority and Dr. Thornton as a commissioner, we traveled to Washington, D.C. with uh, the mayor of Paris, who is the chair of the Mark Joint Powers, and our newly elected supervisor, Jeff Hewitt, who is a member from the county, 
to Washington, D.C. We met with um, U.S. Senators D uh, Dianne Feinstein and Kamala Harris, Congressman Takano and Congressman Calvert, with a lot of our leaders from the military to advocate and um, ask for money for the uh, Cactus Channel, which is the north part of the, um, the, the base, so that there's no flooding. And one of our uh, great concerns is that we've invested a lot of money on Cactus Avenue and with uh, the water um, eroding the street, it could collapse. So we're asking for them to please give us some money so that we can continue to fix that channel. We have money from other entities, but we still need some from the feds. And it was a, a great trip. I think that we're going to have some great results. So just remember that we're here doing the work for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Baca. Um, so tonight we've actually passed and, and done actually a lot of different things. Uh, we uh, were able to get through our balanced budget, and so I do commend uh, the council for that and the staff uh, for all of their hard work as well on that. And the balanced budget does include a lot of different things, and I just want to mention I'm very proud of the Mobile Learns, uh, the Mayor's Challenge. That's something that we uh, were able to win through the Bloomberg Grant. Uh, just this last uh, year, we were a champion city. Uh, they only selected 35 cities in the entire nation. And so it was a, a worthy program that they saw, and that's why they uh, invested in, in the program initially. Um, so I know it's going to help a lot of youth, and it's going to help a lot of the, the, the young adults that are um, majoring in career technical education programs. So a lot of times we put a lot of effort into the academic bound students, and that's great. Uh, which, you know, we have the Promise Initiative, we have other different types of uh, programs, Bog Waiver, Cal Grants, and those things, but we also need to uh, pay uh, special uh, attention to our CTE students. Uh, so these are students that are trying to take that technical uh, track or route uh, into programs like cybersecurity, welding, all different kinds of programs that exist, even in healthcare uh, areas as well. So this program will help pay for their tuition and then also will give them a stipend um, for uh, several months uh, while, while they're working and maintaining good grades. So it's going to be paying for helping them with their, with their grades, to maintain their grades. I also want to say I'm excited about the, the new library that we've allocated for a new library branch in the south end of the town. And again, I want to commend um, Dr. Thornton for your leadership in the Hire a Vet program. I think this is uh, very uh, innovative, you know, of her to uh, come to the council and really bring an idea, and now we're putting that idea into action. So I think that's great. And I also want to thank you for your thoughtful leadership in also wanting to move forward with public safety and really uh, trying to expand, you know, the police satellite um, branch into uh, your district. I think that's very important. So I'm looking forward to to hearing uh, from the Public Safety uh, Committee. Um, I'm pretty sure you won't have problems there because we well, were on the committee and I think you are right as well. So anyway, so I think it's gonna be a great thing uh, for, our, for our city. You know, we need um, to have more eyes out there in our community. And um, I again, just to piggyback on the homeless count, our homeless count, and this is a, an, a separate agency, it's not Moreno Valley, you know, it's the county that's actually, that uh, completed this uh, study, and they found a 50% drop in homeless rate. Uh, so in the past years, it was actually going up every year, but this year it actually went down 50%. And so I attribute that, I believe, to the Homeless to Work program, and then also now we're gonna be uh, targeting uh, even more with the SWAG program. So it's a more aggressive approach as well. Uh, so we're trying to do whatever it takes and whatever we can um, to help uh, those folks um, in that condition. So I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting. There was a council member from Cala Mesa um, that passed away, and his name is Jim Hyatt. Okay, Jim Hyatt, council member from Cala Mesa. So we're going to close the meeting in memory of Jim Hyatt.